Hi you guys, it's another video on the uh, Samsung Note 3. Uh, I've been using this device now since the 25th of last month when it was launched and uh, I keep finding new features that are pretty much hidden and not well uh, shown up so the features that you a lot of people wouldn't be aware of but are actually really really useful features that uh, set this really apart from the uh, Note 2. I know a lot of people say there's not a lot of difference between this and Note 2, there's a few gimmicky features but there's a lot of underlying features that Samsung have put into this device that a lot of people aren't aware of that are really really useful and I'll, I'll point a few of them out, obviously there's loads and loads but a few I've been using recently that I've found that uh, I find really handy, I'm going to point out to you now. Uh, on the Note 2 you'll know you can uh, crop a section of screen out just by holding the button and uh, going around it, you can actually go neatly around it and crop it out. But what you tended to get was this section that you cropped out and you'd save it to your scrapbook and it would stay in that sort of format. You could try and uh, draw around whatever you wanted to and get it neat but basically it would be a freehand uh, crop of a screen. On the Note 3 we've got lots of different options at the top of the screen, as you know we've got this uh, transform uh, box here where if you write a phone number on the screen you can transform it and send straight from it. But we've also got this square icon here, if you click on the square icon it creates a square sort of uh, image that you can save to your scrapbook, you can email it, you can message it, you can send it through chat on WhatsApp or whatever. Really, really handy if you're searching a web page and you find something you like and you want to message someone, it's just a neater way of doing it rather than a freehand crop. Another good feature on this device using the S Pen, a lot of people uh, started to use the S Pen initially when they got the Note 2 and then unfortunately a lot of people ended up putting it back in the silo and didn't use it a great deal after that. You know, uh, What I find is that the main reason for that on the Note 2 is the writability. It was okay but it wasn't perfect. On the Note 3 it's a lot better, even if you use this box at the bottom, the normal writing box, it's okay. But there's an even better feature on the Note 3, one I use all the time for WhatsApp and messaging and I scribble away in it, it's fairly accurate. If you hover over any field on the Note 3 you get a little pen icon that pops up, if I move it over you can see the pen icon popping up. If you click on that, it gets rid of the box at the bottom and you get a field that you can type into, and I'm at an awkward angle here over the screen, is a test. So you can you can write fairly sloppy in it, it more or less gets it 99.9% .9 of the time, it's, it's bang on how it interprets it and it's, for my mind it feels better, it's almost like writing with a felt tip on, uh, on a piece of paper rather than the one at the bottom, it has a different feeling to it. So that's a, a really good feature that I like, uh, the fact that you can have these different text fields and you can write without using this box at the bottom that I'm not overly too keen on. Uh, another feature or another few features that I found really really useful, uh, one of them is uh, removing default applications. Now what you'll know if you've got more than one application of the same thing, whether it's a launcher, it's a music application, it's a, a default video player, what will happen when you put this uh, particular group of applications on your device, it will ask you to set that as a default. If, if you don't set it as always, it will give you an option on the right hand side to go just once. But every time you press the home button or every time you go back to use that particular uh, application that you're using, it will keep asking you to set default or use once. Now you can see at the moment I've got touch with set, set to home, but I can clear it quite easily from this box. Now normally what you would do, you would pull down, you would go into your settings, you go in general, You'd go down to <coughs> Application Manager, you'd go over, this is on other Android devices, you'd go over to All, you'd go down, you'd find it, click on it, then you'd declare, you'd clear defaults. <coughs> Quite long-winded. On this device now, it's very, very easy, you just long press on the main button on the bottom, go to Task Manager, go to Clear Defaults on the left-hand side if there's any there, and clear them. And now you'll see, if I press the Home button now, because I'm trying a few different launches, which I'll probably do in another video, I've got Apex on there, AV8, I've got uh, Launcher there as well, TouchWiz Easy and uh, TouchWiz Home. So what I basically do now is go to whichever launcher I want to go always, and that'll set that as a default, which is easily cleared in if I want to go back to another one. Uh, save going through all the menu and uh, all the long-winded way of doing it. So really, really handy, really quick. Uh, a lot of useful features have been put into the gallery. If you get into gallery, you've now got the option to go into a particular folder, you can swipe left, swipe right to uh, transition between different areas. You can also pinch out to go to bigger thumbnails. You can pinch in to go to smaller thumbnails. Pinch out again to go to large ones. 
a few little things that make life a bit easier, especially if you just want to look at thumbnails and you want them a bit bigger. It's quite easy to pinch them in and pinch out. Uh, you can do it with a sidebar open or sidebar close. So another interesting feature there. A couple of good features within the menu on the uh, gallery app, the standard gallery app. If you click on the uh, menu button at the bottom, you get lots of all uh, different things. You can do slideshow like you could on the Note 2, but you get to uh, do other things like create a collage, create a story album, or create a video clip. Now, a collage is quite straightforward. If you want to upload, I don't know, four photos to Facebook, you can either upload them one by one, or you can make a collage of uh, a few photographs. So you can pick, say, four photographs, you go OK, and then it'll prompt you then to pick a style of uh, collage that you want. That's probably one most people would pick for photos, so you can have different styles. You just click save. It saves it in your gallery under uh, collages, and you can just send from there, or you can share it straight away once you've saved it. So really, really handy extra feature. Uh, another one is uh, create a story album. <clears throat> if you have a lot of pictures and you want to create it like a, almost like a flipboard or my magazine type story album, so you do the same thing again. You can have as many as you want, but we'll put six in. We'll go OK. Uh, we'll create an album, uh, you can give it a title, you can do all sorts, you can create a theme. So we're going to theme and we'll, we'll keep it as, we'll keep it as a magazine so it looks like a magazine theme, we'll go done. And we'll go create album at the bottom. And you can see then what it'll do, it'll create an album, you click on the album, the album will open up and then you've got this flipboard type application where you can go through photographs and look at them. So you could have the, a really big album as big as you wanted and you can title it and make a separate album quite easily that way. Uh, another really useful thing as well, uh, more like a video slideshow than anything else with music. Uh, most uh, computers, Macs, uh, PCs have this feature. But another one, if you uh, go to the menu to do this, it's uh, called Create a Video Clip. So again, you create a video clip. So we'll go down and we'll pick, I don't know, we'll pick quite a few to create a video clip. We we'll go OK. And then you get different options, then you get Memories, Delight, Picnic, Jazz, Vintage, Black and White. Uh, we'll go with Black and White, and we'll then get a preview. So when we play now, we get a preview before it saves it. So you put your title on, and you get the preview. It's, it's basically a video slideshow, and you can put your own music tracks on there. You can edit it, and you can do all sorts of things. Uh, you just save at the top, and you can send that via email. It, it sends to other devices, it's not just totally for Samsung devices. A really neat feature that's just uh, built into the gallery and it's there for you to uh, use and have a play around with. Another excellent feature that's built into the gallery and it's quite handy uh, if you uh, go to a location you can uh, provide you have GPS uh, enabled for your photographs so that means you can weather tag them and GPS tag them so when you click on a photograph you get information where that photograph was taken. But an even better feature that they've implemented on the Note 3, if you click on a photograph and now we can see there's a photograph of uh, a spaghetti western set out here in Spain where most of the spaghetti westerns were filmed. And you can see the photograph of the uh, set there. <clears throat> if I click on the menu button and I scroll down through the menu, this particular place is about 150 miles away from where I live. If I can't remember how to get back there now, I could have uh, geotagged it on uh, maps or uh, navigation, but I can go get directions straight from the photograph. It knows exactly where the photograph was taken, <clears throat> it'll find the route, and straight away, and we can go straight into navigation, navigate straight back to where we took the photograph. Now this feature is really handy, I mean, it's, it, it's a lot easier to take a photograph than to geotag in uh, maps at a particular place. So, if you've got your phone in your pocket, and you're in a certain place, and maybe you're rushing, you're going to jump on a bus, oh I'd love to come back here, but I want to come back in the car. Take a photograph quickly. When you get back home or you're with friends and they're driving, you can say, I know how to get to this place. I click on the photograph and it's geotagged and it'll give you the directions and away you go. Really, really useful features. Uh, as time goes by, I keep finding more features uh, within the phone. Most of the uh, standard ones you already know, uh, the air view pen, etc., with all the air commands that you've got <clears throat> and uh, the multi window and all the rest have been well documented. <clears throat> But I hope this uh, video has been useful, showing you some of the tips that I found uh, on the Note 3. Give me a thumbs up, give me a like, it helps me out a lot. Uh, I do these videos just to help other people, so it's, uh, it's, it's there to help you. If, you. if it's no good to you, don't watch it. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll get more videos out to you uh, shortly in the near future. Again, thanks for watching this video.